Okay, so, hi, I'm Roger uh, from the UK. Um, I'm doing this European argument series. Sounds a bit dramatic, but basically it's like four things that I want to talk about. And the reason I want to talk about these four things is they came up during this European tour that I did, talking to people in, in uh, Amsterdam and Brussels, Paris and what have you. It wasn't any big deal, but a few common themes came out. And I think it'd be useful to sort of, as I said in the previous video, sort of quickly look at the landscape of the issue. And then I'm going to make an argument about it uh, from an XR perspective. Obviously, it's my personal interpretation. Uh, some people might disagree with That's fine. It's about creating some debate and trying to get people to think seriously about what this means in the context of the climate emergency. So the first one is about money. So this one is about centralization versus decentralization. So first thing to say about this is people have been arguing about this debate for a long time. You know, just a few people who are really organized, run the show and tell everyone else what to do, sort of hierarchy, centralization routine, or, you know, are you going to give it to the people and everyone decides what to do in a decentralized way without the hassle of people telling them what to do, let's say. And then from the centralized point of view, people say, you can't have people just doing anything because they're going to break the rules and it's going to be disorganized and a mess. So just in case people aren't aware, people have been talking about this for a long time. <laughs> so for instance, like, I think it was 1871, there's a big bust up between like Marx and the anarchists in the International Working Men's Association. It's a, a sort of symbolic moment in radical politics in, in, in the Western world. And it was all around this. It was like, you know, do we have a decentralized structure or do we have a central committee? So this like argument got really moralized and politicized over the decades and, you know, people end up killing each other about it. So, you know, what, what I want to try and introduce here is a little bit of a let's step back from all the emotion and all the politics and actually look at it a little bit more empirically. And this is what has been done by two groups, I think, over the last 30 years, by sort of social scientists are saying, well, let's have a look at the actual dynamics. You know, how does centralization work? How does decentralization work? You know, what's the pros and the cons and try and pan it out a bit. And then it's also been done, I would say, by what you might call practical left-wing people around the world, like people in Kerala, uh, people in Brazil, sort of thinking, okay, so that top-down thing didn't work and that total bottom-up thing didn't work. So is there some sophistication here? And the answer, dare I say it, is yes, right? There's a sophisticated analysis that requ is required and, and there's some nuance that's required in terms of actually designing what actually works, which gets you the best of both worlds. You're organised and you don't have the worst of hierarchy, as it were, you know, domination of some people telling other people what to do and all the rest of it. All right, so the first thing to say is there's some fundamental point here, which is any group of people have to decide who decides. So this is like a, an old political theory point, as you might say. And if you don't have a group of people who decide stuff, then someone will decide anyway. So this is what is being called the structure of, what's it called? The tyranny of structurelessness, right? Which is feminists came up with in America in the early 1970s. So it goes a bit like this is, if you haven't got a way of making decisions, then you can't decide how to decide. And then if you can't decide how to decide, you can't decide how to decide how to decide. And then you can't decide how to decide how to decide how to decide. How to decide. So you go down this warren, right? So this, this might sound like slightly amusing, but it's catastrophic for a, for a network because at a certain point, like nothing can happen. You just get clogged because let's say I'll give you an example. You know, let's say um, I want to suggest that the rebellion, the international rebellion is on the 7th of October. So you could come to me and say, hang on, Roger, you know, how come you're deciding? You know, what's so special about you? Um, and then you could say, well, I'm going to set up this process through which you can decide it. And then someone else could come along to you and say, hang on a minute, what gives you the right to decide how to decide this process? You know, who's given you the authority to make decisions? You're just some, you know, Eurocentric, white, whatever, right, people. 
you know, what about us? And then they try to decide how to decide how to decide, and then they get challenged. So it's a nightmare. You see how this works? So the fact of the matter is, is there's some decisions that have to be made by the whole group because they affect the whole group. If you want to go and have a picnic, right, no one's bothered, right? It doesn't affect me, so I'm not bothered about that decision. But if you want to, you know, decide that we want to drive on the right-hand side of the road, that affects everyone. So everyone has to be involved in it, and then you have to have a way to decide whether to drive on the right-hand side of the road or the left-hand side of the road, right? So this is a metaphysical thing. It's not a political thing. It's like sometimes there's all group decisions. Like, if you want to have a rebellion on the 7th of October, that affects everyone. It means people, you know, in South Africa or, or Los Angeles or London, everyone has to now go on the 7th of October, right? Well, that affects everyone. So how do you decide it? Well, so this is the role of centralization. You have to have a group that makes that decision. Now, they can make it in a sophisticated way, but the bottom line is you have to have a group that decides. Or, in so much as you haven't got that, you have to have a group that decides how to decide. And you just have to do it. And it's a bit of a ruthless thing, if the truth be known. But if you don't have it, then you either never make any decisions, i.e. there's never a rebellion organised, which is a total disaster from a climate emergency point of view, or it's just chaotic, you know, or someone decides anyway, which isn't great. So the idea of trying to avoid hierarchy just pushes that hierarchy under the ground. In other words, someone just decides, you know, in a covert way, which was the point of the tyranny of structurelessness. You create a tyranny of a few people making decisions without any authority, without any transparency. So the solution is to have some sort of constitutional arrangement, and this has been done, you know, by various radical communities right down history. There's still, there's still rules about how to decide things. Okay, so this is the second issue, is here's the proposition. Unless you have a really centralised structure, you can't effectively decentralise. Okay, so again, this is a nuanced point. It's not like decentralised structure forever or some extreme hierarchy. All we're saying is you have to have some guys at the centre organising the decentralisation. Otherwise, the people that decentralised, number one, don't really know what to do, and number two, don't know what's happening because they don't have any structure. So what the guys at the centre need to do is to design the decentralised structure so people know how to do decentralisation properly. So I'll give you a little example, like with the London XR meetings before last Christmas, there were 150 people coming to meetings. It was all great. They all wanted to decentralise, but they couldn't do it because no one was organising it. So what I said to people is, I want people to work full time in the London office and we're going to organise it. So after a month or two of getting ourselves organised as a centralised organisation, we said, right, here's D-Day. We're going to do talks in the 32 boroughs of London. So over like four or five weeks, we set up 20 groups in London, right? After the rebellion in April, we disband these centralised meetings because we've got vigorous, robust, decentralised groups around London that have been set up, they've got a coordinator, they've been received training, they know how to run meetings, they know what their mandate is, what to do, and they're confident, right? But you can't organise that unless someone's organising it, and whoever's organising it has to do that centrally, at least initially, right? Once they've been set up, obviously, those groups can train other groups. So this is the point is, initially, you have to have centralisation. And this is the same thing with how XR started. XR didn't start with loads of people, like, you know, all coming together arguing. It was 15 people saying, this is what is required in order to have a decentralised movement. So we were a centralised group that was required to create this decentralised movement. We didn't say, this is what we think and all these other ideas have come. We said, this is what we think. If you don't agree with us, that's cool. You can set up your own social movement. But this is what we think and this is how we're going to do it. So, you know, this is a paradox, isn't it? You know, this is when you actually get to, you know, to the actuality of organising things, these are the main issues you have to deal with. It's not some high moral politics about, you know, hierarchy or whatever. It's about actually getting a job done and empowering people in actuality. So, okay, so that's cool. So you've got your structure, you've got your, you know, you've got your, 
anchor circle, whatever, that makes the decisions that affect everyone. That's cool. You've got your secretariat, as it were. You've got your central group who are facilitating this decentralization. And obviously, you need to make sure that they do that job and they don't, you know, they don't not create decentralization. So that's a risk. But, you know, they should be able to do that. And then in the longer term, the next idea is mandates. So I'm not going to talk loads about holacracy and self-organizing systems because that's not really my, you know, specialism. I just want to make the simple point that if you want to effectively decentralize, the most effective way to do it is to create mandates so that people know what they have the power to do within their groups. And this overcomes structurelessness. If you have chaotic decentralization, as it were, no one knows what's going on because no one knows what to do because no one knows what you're supposed to be doing. So you need some sort of mechanism whereby you can give de different decentralized groups a mandate. But that requires centralization because guess what? Someone has to decide who gets what mandate. How do you do that? Well, you need to have a group. Otherwise, you're going to have the who decides, who decides, who decides problem. So again, that group that gives the mandates has to be transparent, has to be trained, the membership has to rotate, all these sort of constructive things to make sure it doesn't come some consolidated hierarchy. But at the end of the day, if someone's not dishing out mandates, then no one knows what to do. So that's the sophisticated you know, analysis that we're not looking at some centralization versus decentralization. What modern scholarship shows is that you can have both, or rather you need both, I certainly need centralization to start off with in order to create these structures. And, and then you have this sophistication that holacracy and sociocracy show. And as I say, I'm not going into the details, but they show that you need to have this sophisticated structure around, around people having mandates and that's transparent and all the rest of it. So hopefully that's what you know, all these groups are going to get on with.